Hey, buenos dias. My name is Randall Parks of The Morning Stoke, and today I have a special guest to talk with you guys today about transition as it pertains to education, but on the backside. So um, my cousin, Eric Neal, is here today to talk with us about that aspect in particular. He's a former uh, Green Beret with 3rd Special Forces Group. He did four combat deployments to Afghanistan. And he was also a sniper and free faller. So welcome, Eric. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate uh, everything that you're doing. And this subject in particular is obviously near and dear to me. So uh, thanks a lot. Okay, so let's get right into it. Um, if you had to go back to when you first joined Special Forces, uh, what would you do differently in regards to the way you looked at education for in the civilian side, like when you get out? Right. So the way I look at it, I break down by education into three categories. We have your civilian college, your military schools, and that's in reference to your military joint service transcript, which we'll get to later, and then your after military mindset. Um, so we'll start with the civilian college. You know, I know there's lots of guys that were like me. I really did not put any emphasis or thought towards you know, civilian college, I was going to say, hey, let me wait till I'm an E7 to when I'm going to need it to actually progress through the ranks. Um, and th that's really the wrong answer. You know what I mean? You need to be putting some effort and some emphasis on that civilian education. And that's one of my big regrets. You know, there's lots of guys that's like, hey, I just want to go to you know ranger school or I want to go to all the cool guy schools. And I totally get it. That's what I did. But when you look back on it, you kind of need to also, you know, put a little weight into your future as well. So I would strongly encourage, you know, especially with the with the decrease in op tempo right now in, in both of the combat theaters, you know, there's really not a good excuse to not at least be researching civilian education so you can get ahead of that. Um, so in the, uh, the second part of the military schools, and that's in reference to your military joint service transcript. I really didn't even know about this until I was well into my medical retirement, my final year, right? Your military joint service transcript is basically a sheet of paper that colleges will use to apply credits that you get from all your military schools, right? So for example, free fall school will give you, you know, a certain number of credits. Um, depending on your MOS, you'll get a bunch of credits. Um, so you want to Think about what military schools you're going to. Obviously, do the ones that are going to help you progress through the ranks. But if you have a couple that are on your list and you're not exactly sure which one you want to go to, you know, looking at how much credit is actually going to be able to be applied towards your JST in the end should yeah. be a factor, at least in weighing what school you go to. It's going to help you out a bunch in the end. What, and school then the after you, what schools would you say that you'd recommend um, from, from your line of work? Right. So so my MOS was an 18 Echo communication sergeant. So I had a lot of the prerequisites or credits for a lot of the electives, technical writing, all that. So anything navigation is going to be a big one. Most military schools have a lot to do with navigation. Ranger school gives you a lot of credits and leadership. Um, I'm sure the, the Marine Corps has other leadership type schools that you can go to. And what I would suggest doing is go to your S1 or your, your administrative office and ask them, hey, can I see how many college credits are actually going to be applied to me for this school versus this school? You know, and if they're giving you a hard time, you know, bring them a case of beer, <laughs> sit down with them, I'm sure they'll help you out, right? Um, and uh, the, the third part is the after military mindset, right? And that doesn't mean a mindset that you want after you get out of the military. That's a mindset that you want right now, okay? That comes into especially NCOs, right? Your bullets that you put into your NCO ERs. You want to be thinking about how these bullets can be used later in developing your resume, right? So I went back through all my NCO guards and said, hey, this was awesome. This was awesome. You know, let me go ahead and change the verbiage a little bit to make it more civilian applicable. And it was good. And then your experience, your military experience, um, all that, always be focusing on, hey, how can I utilize this experience to maybe better me in the, in the, uh, in the end? So that's how I break down that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for the insight. I, I think guys don't really think about um, getting out until like six months prior. So I think if we can if we can change the mindset of guys out there to start looking at that, if you're you're going to do a career, that's great. Um, but at least around your ten year mark, maybe start thinking about what you're going to do when you grow up, right? 
Um, yeah. and then, you know, you never know something unfortunate could happen along the way and you've got to get out in a year on a PEV or, or something like that. You just never know. Um, so yeah. as a retiree now, what programs did you use um, and that you felt were instrumental in your success to where you're at now? Right. So there's many programs that different branches will have. I particularly looked at our Green Beret Foundation. They have a, um, I guess, a subsection called the Next Ridge Line. Um, what they do is they help veterans transition. They get them in touch with uh, different veteran business owners to kind of get their feet wet in the civilian world and actually learn how to apply that military experience and uh, caveat that into uh, the civilian market. Um, that We got the Honor Foundation, yeah. which unfortunately I didn't know about until I was already in the uh, master's program at UC, the MBB program, or else I totally would have jumped on that. Um, so don't just... Don't just think that things are going to pop in your lap. You need to be researching this stuff. You need to be talking to other guys that have gotten out and say, hey, what programs did you use in particular? Um, so, uh, yeah, these programs are going to help you do all kinds of stuff um, from disability ratings to, you know, writing resumes to apply to college and all that. So after the military, one of the one of the big things that I had an issue with was choosing a college. Right. So choosing a college is is really important because uh, BAH is a lot more money in different locations, right? So if you're a medically retired individual and you've got non-taxable income, you know, and you don't have a family or you don't have anything like that, hey, go find out where the BAH is. In California, it was like $3,000 versus $2,000 here in Texas. So if you have the ability to move around based on that, you can really supplement your income really well with that. Um, and then there's a different programs in the colleges. Um, the certain program that I did, it's a bachelor's of applied arts and science, and it might be under a different name at different universities, but they're interdisciplinary programs that will give you more credits towards that degree using your JST than a normal BS and, you know, uh, I don't know, history or something like that. So researching those programs in particular, um, that can help you get through your college quicker is going to be something you're definitely going to want to put some time towards. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate you saying that. Um, I think it's it's super important to to have some have some forward thought about what you want to do and understand what education is going to get you there. Um, I started off, I was going to get a poli sci degree, and luckily I had an amazing sergeant major, uh, Sergeant Major Duncan. He pulled me in and was like, "Dude, what are you going to do with that? Like, are you going to go be a lawyer? Like, are you going to be a poli sci teacher in in high school?" I'm like, "No." He's like, "Well, what do you want to do when you get out?" I'm like. I don't know. He's like, well, why don't you get a business degree? Like, it's so versatile. You can do so many things with it. And the next day, I changed it on the spot. So, um, so yeah, next time, um, we're going to talk about doing these educational um, and or doing these educational programs and taking care of these educational opportunities while you're on active duty. So, if you have any questions on what that is like, please ask them down below in the chat or in the comments section, and Eric and I will try and address those on the next one. So Eric, thank you so much for coming out today. Uh, I really appreciate your time, and I look forward to uh, getting on with you on the next one uh, that we do for Active Duty Guys. So Absolutely. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And obviously, please give us uh, any questions that you have, and we can do maybe a longer section and address them one by one. Awesome. Thanks, brother. As always, bye con Dios.